Hello, my name is Dr. John Kaiser and I'm the immune doctor. Today, we're going to talk about how not to catch the coronavirus, but if you do, how to do well. Let's get started. Hi, my name is Dr. John Kaiser. I've taken care of people with serious viral conditions for over 30 years. My goal in these videos is to teach you the lessons I've learned on how to support your own immune system so it can do the job it's tailor-made to do, which is to fight off a viral infection. This is episode number two of the series how to fight the coronavirus and stay healthy. If you remember from the first episode, there's approximately a 1% mortality risk with the coronavirus. One out of 100 people on average will die if they get infected with the coronavirus. Also, there's a 15 to 20% risk of severe infection, at least requiring hospitalization. However, as we talked about last time, 80 to 85% of infections will result in either no symptoms, mild symptoms, or moderate symptoms. The research is starting to identify that between 25 and 50% on average of patients who get infected with coronavirus will not show any symptoms. We call those patients asymptomatic spreaders. And they're one of the reasons that COVID-19 is so infectious. It's because at least 25% of people who have COVID-19 are asymptomatic and can spread the disease to others. Also, we've identified that some people have symptoms for a very long time or continue to test positive for a very long time. For instance, just today in the San Francisco Chronicle is a report of a doctor at UCSF Medical Clinic who began to show symptoms back in early March, tested positive for coronavirus about three or four weeks later, and 60 days uh, after she first was exposed and had symptoms, she continues to test positive, she continues to have symptoms. So we presume that she continues to be infectious. Other patients clear the, the infection, begin to test negative, but continue to feel poorly with what's called post-viral syndrome. That can include chronic fatigue, brain fog, migrating aches and pains, and this post-viral syndrome uh, in many cases is very hard to recover from. So this is why it's really important to prevent infection if possible. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. I'd like to share with you something I learned when I was in medical school at the University of Texas in Houston. I had a teacher in infectious diseases who in his first lecture taught us a very important concept. The probability of infection equals three things. The size of the inoculum, which means how many viral particles you're exposed to. The organism's virulence, which is how aggressive is it, and the host's immune strength. So size of inoculum, organism's virulence, and the host's immune strength. Those are the key factors in probability of infection. Let's drill down uh, one by one a little deeper. Size of inoculum. One concept I'd like to get across is if you are starting to go back out and socialize, increased density of people equals increased risk. If you're in a group who happens to be in a room, let's say 200 square feet, if there's five people in that room, the chances if one of them is COVID positive, 
uh, is that a certain amount of dispersal of viral particles will take place. But if you're in that same room with eight people, one or maybe two of them may be positive, and there's just a much uh, denser exposure to viral particles. So increased density equals increased risk. The smaller the group of people you know and trust, the less risk of you being exposed to COVID-19. We know that wearing masks, practicing social distancing are two key concepts to decreasing your risk of exposure. But I wanna introduce a third one, which is watch what you breathe. If somebody comes up to you who's not wearing a mask uh, or passes you, hold your breath for a couple of seconds, move out of that airspace, and then start breathing again. And you will decrease your risk of exposure uh, from breathing respiratory droplets or particles to zero. The next thing I'd like to talk about is the pathogen's virulence. We know coronavirus is a highly aggressive virus. It's a novel virus, which means none of our immune systems have ever seen this particular virus before. It attacks the lungs. It can cause uh, hyperinflammatory effects in the body. We know it has a much higher death rate than normal influenza. This is a given. This virus is highly pathogenic, highly aggressive. That's why we need to work on the other two parts of the equation, decreasing the risk of exposure and the size of the inoculum and improving your immune system strength. We're gonna talk about how to increase your immune system strength over the next several episodes of my video series. So please, I would like to invite you to click the subscribe button and click notifications. I'm planning to put these videos out at a rate of about one a week because there's so much information uh, to cover and to convey. So if you'd like to continue receiving these, please click the subscribe button, uh, share it with a friend, and I'll see you the next time. Please be safe, stay well, and thank you. This episode of The Immune Doctor was sponsored by KPAX Immune Formula. More info can be found at kpaxfarm.com.